sorry I couldn't focus on your chart very much, but I got the part of in your chart it has to do with kids and your kids could be taken away from you and it's not your fault because if it's his chart, his kids would be taken away from him and the lesson would be learned of him in his. And that was true. You said you have what? Yes, four boys and all of them got taken away. Yeah, and it's not your fault. It's the, his chart, his lesson. It's a hard lesson learned. But anyways, but you are, it's all the focus on you, you and your family. It's all good. I don't know. There's more things to say, but I'll tell you another time. Toodles. Oh, really? Also, okay. your Neptune did us some right here and right now. Okay. So, what I sense, like, on the first time I saw that bitch, right here, you? Okay, <laughs> the first one was your red hair and stuff. That's sister, and she looks like you more. Mm -hmm. Is that true? Mm -hmm. That's the first one I picked up on that she looked like you. And then... I, no, then you already said you had a dead son, but did he have black hair? I'm so confused. I'm gonna die. <laughs> okay, then. Black hair. Black hair. Black hair. Black hair. Good, good, good. Need long hair? So your kid's gonna be black with <laughs> black hair? <laughs> <laughs> you confused me. No. Okay. My sister, the other sister, she had long hair. Okay. Okay, the one that died. My oh. other sister that is alive that has you're talking hair. about? Yes, she does. It's like long. Okay. But she looks like you too. Yes. Like but she's really cute. She's tiny, cute. petite, like you. Mm -hmm. Pretty mm -hmm. elf looking bitch. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> That's my sister. And uh, yeah. Then y'all had some death between us, crying um, at each other, mm -hmm. like our twins or something. We're not twins, but y'all look so much alike. We do. In my vision, that I don't she's, know. She's uh, way younger than me, but we're, yeah. you know, she's my youngest. Yeah. A new battery in the drawer. And but, um, you had a little boy. Do you have a living little boy too? Well, I've got three. Okay, don't tell me. Cause oh. I, I, I pick up one by one by one. Okay. One on one. But maybe you can. Just... I'm trying to find out what I was looking at because I can't see it. <laughs> I was. Maybe it'll come back later or something. It's only on you. It should just come to me like when I'm gone. Maybe oh, I'm, really? I don't know. I don't know if I can know. I'm tired of this bullshit. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. It don't matter. You I guess I'll just mom. give up. But um, Maybe next time. But you do have this spiritual stupid ass energy bitch and I just want to pick up on it and be like I'm in know it all but I'm really not. Not right now. But I sort of just do that. I don't know. It's just crying and stuff. And, stuff. and when you're in your period, come back to me. You don't have periods. I was, I was afraid you could say Well, then you buy the dust. <laughs> periods have ones that it makes people like the animals and stuff. It's just like us. Mm -hmm. So you go for those. And people have seizures and stuff. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Yeah, no. I don't have those no more. Yeah, I do. Okay. Well, <laughs> okay, back to. Okay. Have you ever seen demons? No, I've seen you're not, yes. In, yeah, in, my, think, in my visions, yes. Okay. And they're like, do they give you headaches or anything? Because they give me headaches or whatever. Because they're mm -hmm. just dark, polluted energy. Yeah. Basically, that's all it is. Mm -hmm. And you're the light. Stay in the light. Do the best you can. That's all there fucking is. You can be a douchebag and still be in the light. Mm -hmm. It's hard. Ridiculous. Right. That's what the Good Samaritan light will protect its light because it's all mm -hmm. like okay, the well, light. <laughs> anyway. So the dark. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Right, right. The cigarette smoke. The cigarette smoke. Hey, yeah, we're, we're trying so to. You can be there. Uh, yeah, okay. Okay. Cool. You can do it. It's no cigarette now. <laughs> okay, um. Oh, no. Daddy, but I, I, I don't have know. You, have you ever been. Okay, here we go. I'm doing her charge. Okay, I'll do that. Okay. Right. Okay. 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 Hello. 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 You're a Gemini. And you're. You're Gemini. Okay. 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 Well, let me tell you, your moon is in Aries, and it's in the first house, and your first house is in Pisces, so you're a Gemini. If anyone asks you what your astrology sign is, you're a Gemini. Pisces rising, moon in Aries. Your moon is in Aries. It's your mom and your emotions. It's how she is. So she probably puts you into um, sports and stuff. You're probably kind of a tomboy. And also, your emotions are on the outside right when you meet people, right when you initiate people, because your rising sign is Pisces, so you come off as a chameleon and really, really sweet and all this good stuff. Right when people meet you, right away. Like a spiritual person, just right away. And uh, a chameleon. So you look like all the signs. Because it's your face. Your rising signs, Pisces. And your moon's there, so everyone wants to see that. You might be a little bit aggressive. And, um, as you come out, and a leader. Okay, your, your Mercury is in Cancer in the fifth house. So that's how you think you communicate. So when you talk, people listen. And you have a mother nourishing, nourishing voice, and you have, you put, Words to an emotion, your emotions, your cancer sign. This, okay. Your your Venus is in Gemini. It's in the third house. This is what you're looking for in other people in love. Gemini's rule communication. It, it rules. Uh, it rules neighbors and siblings. The third house does. And it rules writing 
and you would write stories about your love life. Okay. You would write about love life and stuff and beautiful stories because your Venus is in the third house and third house Taurus, so you're probably really good at math or something. And obviously, <laughs> you work out. Um, and you have a beautiful voice because your third house is Taurus. And um, third house is like your hands. So you have beautiful hands. And uh, <laughs> you're looking, you probably, I don't know, date your neighbors, your siblings, your, you're looking for people like that, or looking for people you date like that. I don't know. Because that's what it rules. But I'm just talking shit about Gemini. And plus, it means to me that you have samples of other people in relationships and you treat them all like you're the you're the one for me but obviously you're trying out this other person and then you get everyone out of your life and you keep focusing on one person that you actually want but, but it's, it's still multi-dimensionally dating in that way because Venus and Gemini is kind of like the player but it doesn't mean you have to be a player Plus, until you have a solid relationship which is the third house for us and also this is means when you wake up, you wet your third house is when you wake up. Your ninth house is when you're going to bed. Okay, so I'm gonna just go to your ninth house. Your ninth house is in Scorpio. When you go to bed, you're like desirable, sexual, and um, you know, Scorpio like, and it's your philosophy, it's how, how you learn, and um, so you're emotionally serious when you go to bed, I guess, and then chaotic when you go to bed. It's chaos when you go to bed, and at church it'd be chaos. You'd be like, I don't wanna. Um, pussy God, I want a real God to come and save me and stuff and rescue me. And then you wake up all mothering and nourishing as, well, you wake up as a Taurus, the boss, and beautiful and financially secure and talkative and identity, I guess, because your Venus is there and you're always waking up to your relationship. You want to wake up to your relationship, I guess. Okay, your Mars is in Cancer, in the fifth house Cancer. This is how you get mad at people. This is your sexual expression and how you get mad and why you get mad. Your Mars is in Cancer is also your willpower. So you have a weak willpower because it's in Cancer. But it's in the fifth house. So when you get mad into a fight and stuff, the fifth house is ruled by Leo, the heart. And so when you get mad and everything, um, you, you do petty things to people when they make you mad and emotionally upset you. And um, it also means... Like, you put your willpower into an expression, like, you could be an actress, and, um, get all this good attention and creativity, you put all your work into your family and creativity, because cancer rules family, and, um, this also means you're, you're the heart of the family of your family, you're the heart of your family, and, um, man, it also means, uh, maybe you're the leader of your family, I don't know, um, but, uh, it means... You would also, when you get mad at your enemies, you might even stick up for them. And you might be really generous with even your enemies. Like, you get them out of trouble, even if or somebody you just don't know or something. Like, that's funny. And you might have multiple orgasms and that. But Mar Mars and Cancer means that you'd rather cuddle than have to do the deed or whatever. But anyways, most likely. But your Jupiter is your higher learning, expansion, and of knowledge in your philosophy. It's an area. It's in the second house. The second house is ruled by Taurus. It's your possessions and your value and your relationships. And, and it's, um, yours is an area, so, um, if you aim at anything financially, financial or possession, you want, you got it, you'll get it. And, uh, financial stability and a good relationship, value, and beauty and stuff. But, uh, it means if you want to be a leader, you could be, if you just aim at that too, because you're lucky with being a leader. Be you yourself. That paper. You got it. Um, We're going to shut that one off when, when you're done with that. How much more on that paper? On hearts, because I don't know how much on the video. Well, let's see how long it goes. Okay. You're, okay. So you're... Also, uh, you might look like your mom because your moon is in your first house, so your, your mom might look like, maybe? Like a chameleon Pisces, whatever. I don't know. So she might be showing you unconditional love, but um, also make you take care of yourself somehow. And um, also um, maybe um, won't take responsibilities for you. Rather not take responsibility for you or something, but show you unconditional love, but she'll be a leader of you. I don't really know. It could be, could not be. But uh, your fourth house is in uh, Gemini, so she might be a two-faced person. 
but she she would she would still welcome you at home and let you stay there all your life. And but at home, you are a talkative gossip person, and you and you talk all about your neighbors. But in the tenth house, the tenth house of your career, you're very very lucky. You're very lucky in the career. You could be a guru. You would be very well known, whether you like it or not. Everyone knows you. Your tenth house is inside of Terrace. You're lucky with everyone knowing you. The expansion of your career and stuff. You also have your anus in your tenth house, and everyone can see the unusual side of you and your your future futuristic side. And you might travel with your um, career. And you also have Saturn and Sagittarius in your tenth house. So your your father could have gave you a, a business and took it away from you. And he was probably really uh, disciplined on you. Maybe you were uh, grow up faster and probably had to buy your own car, maybe, and travel away with your dad to learn things or something like that. And also your moon is in the rising sign Pisces, which you probably had to learn forgiveness to your mom, but also about yourself and who you are and um, being sporty and stuff. Okay, um, your, um, you have unusual jobs because your Uranus is in Sagittarius in the 10th house of Sagittarius in foreign lands, different places, keeping things moving, traveling with your job, who knows? You're gambling with your job, and you're hardworking, your career, and your reputation, but everyone's gonna know you and you'll have restrictions on that and then it'll give it to you back and forth because it's gonna be really hard to get one. But they will give you one. Easily. I don't know. Your Neptune is in Capricorn in the eleventh house of social media, so you will also have uh, weird spiritual friends that you and you'll be spiritual to your friends or whatever, and uh, you probably will be friends with people at your work job because Capricorn is there. That means you want to work with your friends and stuff like that, and put them on camera and stuff, and social media and stuff. Your Pluto is in Scorpio in the eighth house, Libra, which means. That's okay. just where it belongs in anyway. the eighth house, but this is where you die. This is how you, you're done. Okay, your eighth house is in Libra. This means you might die of a kidney failure because Libra rules the kidneys, and your eighth house rules death. You might have a secret death, and you might be isolated and alone when you die because your Pluto is in Scorpio in the eighth house of Libra. Kind of like a cat that runs off and dies. You could be careful with your kidneys. Is there any more on her phone? Yeah, how much more on that one? Lilith and Cancer. And the fifth house it means that people don't want to see how a baby or family, but you do it anyway, so you fail to do it and you get it done. And you're arrogant about it. It's your sexual expression. I mean, no, it's not your sexual expression, it's your arrogance. It's your sexual arrogance. Lilith is like the Adam story of Adam and Eve, where she rebels and says, Screw you, Adam. I don't want to submit to you. I want to do my own thing. I'm tired of being your slave. And you do it in a cancerous family personality. And also, Mars in the fifth house means you protect your kids no matter what. You are. A warrior for your kid because the fifth house rules the relationship with children, children and your cancer rules the family and the home. You protect your home at all costs and then your mother too. You protect them all. And um, um, uh, you have Lilith and Cancer in the fifth house. Fifth house ruled by Leo and it kind of makes means you might have multiple guys because the fifth house rules reproduction system and uh, stuff like that, which is funny. Um, but anyways, um, your North Node is in Aries. You're meant to be a leader. You already learned about uh, relationships and uh, being leads others and being beautiful and balanced. Now it's time to think about yourself and being a leader and being about who you are. And it's in your rising sign as well that everyone's going to see. Everyone sees your purpose. When they meet you, that is your purpose. Like, right when you acquaint yourself with everybody and be this spiritual chameleon Pisces, they just see your soul right away. It's in your face. Your soul is in your face. And um, your stuff, yeah. And your seventh house is you're already used to being your shadow self. And your seventh house in Virgo, you uh, attract all these people who you see different from you that are just like organized, day to day repeat team people, perfectionist, critical people. You see them as different from you, like, but you will attract all them Virgo people. And your boyfriend apparently is a Virgo. So, um, also, that's like your past self. You're always been, uh, you already learned about the Virgo. You already learned about other people. You already learned about the show themselves and being a Libra. And relationship stuff. And marriage. You already probably learned. But. Not how much better. Okay. So that's what I'm saying. Let's continue. Next clip. Okay, let me know when you're. How much is on that paper? It's not much more than I'm going to do with your boyfriend. Okay. You're good. It's her battery life is what I'm worried about. Oh, okay. Uh, well, I'll finish. Go ahead. 
I'm not finishing. Okay. Um, so, um, you'll attract this Virgo people. That's cool. But you'll see them as different from you. Because you're like a passional Pisces. But you're also going to be fooling people and deceiving because you are a Pisces rising a million to everything. You might not secretly be like that. You might secretly just be a multi-dimensional too. Or a moon in Aries. But we don't know if you're deceiving us or not with your nice, kind, emotional um, projection. Who knows? But you'll be very lucky with being well known and being like a guru and cool and stuff. And, um, where did you 12 houses in Capricorn? Yeah. And you'll find your soul in your career. Okay, next, here is your boyfriend. Okay. One, two, three, four, five, go. Okay, well, Sun and Virgo, the contradicting person. It's, um, someone who likes to turn everything into products and sell things. And they're very good at giving hit. They're very good at selling it like um, a pencil for like five hundred dollars and scamming it and lying about it. And they don't lie very well. But this person loves to work and they don't like to not work. It's in the fifth house, Leo, too, which means they could be in the spotlight. They could be an actor. They 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 um. It also means um, well, um. The parties is the fifth house too, and like stand and stuff, or whatever. But so okay, he also has moon and Capricorn, which means he had to grow up fast. His mother didn't buy him a car; he probably had to buy his own car, maybe. And and his mother was probably just his biggest fan because his fourth house here, which I like these placements, is in Leo. So at home, he is the king, and everybody walks when they chose on him. But in the public's eye, he's everybody's friend, and is the weirdo, not afraid to be um, a friend to everybody, and um, like um, and and very cooperative. Like he could be an actor. If anybody wants to direct this person, he would be the best in on stage. Like if he was in football or cheerleading or in a play, and someone was sick and they were the lead. He could take over and be the lead and play his own part and somebody else's part if they were missing. Like, he is, could be very talented in expression. Because at home, his mom was like a stage mom. And, he, and his mom would put him into plays and stuff. And if you, if, you don't be put, if you don't push this person into the spotlight where he belongs or into his career on stage, then everybody will miss out on all his higher self aquariusness because he has to be pushed into it to show his light and his great talent. And he's very cooperative at his job. He would be very good to work with. A friend, a best friend on camera, social media. And um, um, his, his Mercury is on Libra, so he has a beautiful voice, and it's in the sixth house Libra. So he has to deal with communicating every day and relational things every day. Maybe even be a marriage counselor. Oh, his Venus is in Leo. That's his love. He's looking for a story, a dr dramatic story. He's very generous in love. He might give you the world like a romantic, rom exotic person in love. In the fourth house of home. So he wants to bring his love home. You want to date at home. Bring your partner at home, he brings where he's the key. His Mars and his Mars is in Scorpio. This is when you get mad, and this is your sexual expression. This means he is very, very jealous and violent when he gets mad. Very possessive and controlling. It's in the sixth house Libra, which means every day he's got to work really hard and he's determined every day in his daily activities and his routines. And when he's a Virgo anyways, it's a little bit Virgo. And balance everything every day with his partners and stuff. Also, he might be, he'd rather be high dignity than just sleep around. Because he can hold his sexual frustration in. And everyone around him will feel sexually aroused by his presence of scorpion of powers and manipulation. Because he holds in his frustration when it's projecting to everyone else. And they wonder why they're aroused and frustrated around his presence. And every day. And um, also, like a magnet. And then um, his, 
his do, that means in a fight with a person who has Mars and Cancer in the fifth house, you would be doing petty things when you get mad at this person who's a very jealous of this person, and they would be getting you revenge every day. But it'd be chaos every day in his relationship, but in balance at the same time somehow, taking you to the underworld every day. But marriage is his main focus. He wants to be married. Okay. His Jupiter, but all his relation is 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 force and willpower into relationship. His Jupiter is in Virgo, so he's very lucky with living to his own abundance. He's lucky with his job, his everyday routine. He's lucky with aiming that his farming. He could own a farm, animals, relationship with animals. It's in the fifth house, Leo, so he is lucky with getting all his under attention and being at the heart of the matter and surrounded with drama and. Um, He's lucky with expression and creativity. He's lucky with um, having the light shine on. His Saturn is in Virgo in the fifth house too, so he might have he might have a crumbled ego, and it means that he might have allergies too. He might have some kind of health problem in a diet. He has to be really, really strict on his diet. He has to be very serious about his diet. Okay, could go wrong. And he also have, might have heart problems too, because the fifth house rules. His fifth house is in Leo. Saturn is there. He has restrictions on his heart. He has to worry about his heart. And he also has to worry about um, his relationship with his own children. His children, his father. His father must have been very critical of him. And his father must have been a, a narcissist. His father must have been his biggest fan, putting pressure on him to be everyday chores and give him all this lavishing attention though and his dad could have been a spotlight more too but um he could be an actress with this he thing he could be this makes this virgo your boyfriend an actor but he might not see himself as a very good drawler a very good creative person but he has it he has the opportunity to do it and it could be taken away like he could get auditions people will want him to be an actor a model they want him to be this person that's in the spotlight, but he might not feel very good about himself doing that, but he can do it, and he should do it, and he will learn lessons on doing it, and he, it could be taken away from him if he's just an asshole about it. He's too overborn with his ego, and it's supposed to try to make him a healthy ego, and a, a, a fearless one, and a, well, a very threatening one, a very protective one, a very... Um, you know, good ones. So try to make him have a good heart, and he has a generous heart, you know, and a friendly heart, and a critical heart. Pure heart is what we're trying to get him to go through. Of. Angelic like heart. And his Uranus is in Scorpio, so when he's unusually weird, and he's in the seventh house of Scorpio, so he does, he's, so this means he has Taurus rising. He's a Virgo. Taurus rising, moon, and Capricorn. Virgo is his willpower, his sun sign. His rising sign is how he meets people and sees people right away. People see him right away. So right away he becomes off comes off as stable and beautiful. He has a beautiful face. A beautiful Taurus face. And a moon and Capricorn on the inside. So he has to balance his emotions while he's swimming with these hooves and his mermaid fin and his reputation and hard work. Hard lessons with his mom. He had to be his own. His, probably his mom's father, maybe, you know, um, and it's in the house of Sagittarius, uh, which is, uh, the eighth house. He's, he might have a dead, dead mother, or he travel a foreigner mother. He might, uh, have inherited something from his mother, because his moon's in the eighth house of, uh, other people's money, which is ruled by Scorpio, and, um, he might die in a foreign land. He might die of stomach or intestine cancer or breast cancer because his moon's there. He might live a, ha a old age, but not be so happy, but he might die in a foreign land or something like away from home because it's eight thousand chairs traveling, you know, expansion. Okay, his, his, uh, he's, he's very lucky with this money thing and, his, and it could be given to him by his father and taken away. But it, he, he could put it on to his own life and be lucky with doing it in his own way, his own routine, like getting the energy for it, like an actor. His Uranus is in Scorpio. He, 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 he attracts 
unusual people that are jealous and possessed and he sees them different from him, but secretly he is this way himself. And future interest people. Secretly he is this way. It's a shadow stuff, the seventh house. It's opposite people. You might not like even like Scorpios. But chaotic people. He keeps on track to this weirdo, chaotic people. But um yeah. And then he has Neptune and Sagittarius in the eighth house. As well, he also might be poisoned in death. He might OD. He might be. He might kill himself. He might. Because Neptune rules suicide. Neptune is Pisces in Capricorn. He might. And it expansion is in Sagittarius. He might be in a foreign land and accidentally get poisoned. So be very careful with poison. Be very careful with foreign lands far away from home. Be careful with your breasts and whatever the moon rules. The mother. Be very careful. He might be able, he might drown, because Neptune also rules that poison, suicide, and toxins, and psychic ability, though. He might have a good sense of psychic ability that expands what he learns. Um, but, uh, yeah. And, um, wow. Okay, his, his, Lilith is in Libra, so he's going to be very proud of his beauty and his relationships. Every day, he has to rebel to make things balance. The sixth house, a day to day routine, Libra. And Pluto is in Libra, which means he don't like to isolate himself. He, he wants to be someone alone with somebody. He'll be with somebody, he'll be like, come with me so I can be with myself, by myself, with somebody. He always has to have a partner in relationship every day in the sixth house, Libra. And criticize other people, maybe. And, uh, but, Always have a relationship together. And then, um, uh, his North Node is in Leo, in the fourth house, Leo. His, his, he lacks a home, a comfort zone, a family. But this is purpose to be, have a family. It's his purpose to get the spotlight. His purpose is to be a narcissist. His purpose is to get all this act, acting career things going on. It's his purpose to be creative. It's his purpose to express himself, to be good. All this stuff he can make. All kinds of good things happen to him. It's a very good chart, and, but it's a very hard chart. It's a very, you know, kind of school in himself kind of chart, too. But, um, but anyways, that's as far as I'm going to get. But um, thank you ever so kindly for that. Good stuff. Oh, yeah. Forgot to mention other things, but... Also, I forgot Pluto and Libra. It's kind of like you can have secret love in there, secret marriages or something. I didn't get to finish the chart. I mean, I could talk for hours and hours for that chart. Because that chart's still alive. All those charts or whatever. So, I don't know. I guess, I don't know if I'll finish it another time. Just things I want to say about it. Extra things. Real quick stuff. Okay, take credit for something that other people can all they already discover. Everybody else can get their own credit for discovering what this shit is. So you, you just look at every little place and be like, What's the name Pisces mean? Like... What other people are saying about it? What's Saturn and Scorpio in the sixth house for real? Why am I having that? challenges? Other people do that. Oh, to calculate your chart, you just go to. Cat Okay, well, um, I had told, I had told Lonnie that I, I, um, I couldn't find my glasses, but I found them, so if he, if he brings it up to you about some glasses, maybe left in the car or something, tell him that, that, that I already found them. But, um, okay, well, I'm gonna eat my lunch and I'll, maybe I'll get you up this evening and see how, you, how your day was. I won't, I won't say that to him. Yes, ma'am. Oh no, yes, you know I got I, I got this. Oh yes ma'am. We on the same page. <laughs> okay. You have a good day. Okay. Okay, and I'll let you know. I'll let you know. I'll let you know if I get my check uh blank and like my check, you know. Um, I could get it today. Could, hopefully, that would be awesome if I got it today. Maybe you could get one and go cash it. And maybe go get our toes done or something. You know? Oh, okay. Okay. Well, 
Ah, oh, oh, how awesome! That's awesome. Well, you enjoy that then. You enjoy that, but I'll let you know uh, maybe, maybe Monday or something if it comes in. Like I said, it's supposed to be around the first, but I'll, I'll keep in touch with you. Thank you for checking on me. Thank you. I love you. I am doing good. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you. I'm, I'm trying. I am. I am. Thank you, Ms. Bob. Thank you. I feel better. A lot better. <laughs> Thank you. Bye-bye. Okay, let's get this over with. Um, it's okay. Okay, your Saturn is in Scorpio. This is your life lessons, discipline, and restrictions, and uh, responsibilities, and it's harder for you on this placement than anybody else. Okay, yours is in Scorpio, and it's also in the sixth house, and it's conjunct your Uranus. And um, Sagittarius, which is expanding unusual things in the sixth house. The sixth house is ruled by Virgo. Virgo is day-to-day -day routines, okay? So you're going to have all these challenges there, and you're going to be mad everywhere, and you're going to put your force into working every day, but it's chaotic. And also, Mars and Scorpio is your sexual expression and how you get mad. And it means that you are the jealous, most violent motherfucker in a relationship. And it's every day for some reason. I don't know why. And then you, like, I am like that. so, so yeah, you violent and jealous. <laughs> but it's the player to your Taurusness. You're like nothing like that, but be real. But every day at work, you, you, or hard hard work, uh, and being productive. But it's going to be hard for you every day because you might have an unusual prop, a disease or health problem or bad allergies that you never knew. The unusual fucking things every day you have challenges. Like if you if you like like if you work if like you work out all week, but you stop for five days or or you um. Which is, I don't know if it's good for your body, but, uh, or like if you eat one donut, you're going to gain like 1,200 mm -hmm. pounds for no freaking reason. Yeah. So you have to be really strict on your diet, because the sixth house rules diet and day-to-day -day routines. So That's life, life. A lot of problems with my diet, like up and down. Yes. Up and down. Oh, you'll, you'll have it for the rest of your fucking life. It's going to be annoying. Well, because of this, unusual things will just come up too, because the urine sewers are there, and you're just so that I have the same place with too. My life is hell with food and pollution and all this ugly ass bullshit. Because I'll never be perfect. It means that you're supposed to let go of control. You're supposed to get let go of um, uh, control because it's us. And you're supposed to let go and be per perfect because you're a perfectionist. But it can give you it can give you the opportunity and it'll allow you to be perfect and have perfect health. But it'll take away from you just because you're supposed to follow this regimen of hell because. It's it's horrible, and it's not going to affect everybody else. Like everybody else would be the secondhand smoker, and you're just like, I'm not doing this. I don't want to be around it, and it's affecting you, and it's not affecting them. You know what I mean? So you'll have a harder uh, health life. Fuck us. <laughs> wow. I have that bullshit, and that it's terrible. Sucks. It does. Yeah. So like, it's like, it's so like good. we got to deal with uh, our weight fluctuating. All, all this, are, yeah. all our health yeah. problems, and allergies. Yeah. It's just the bullshit wow. board. This is dumb. And day day routines crap. Like maybe you'll give up and become a hoarder because you want it to be in order or something and it just be like, What the hell? Why didn't I do this? Because you have to. It's making you do it. I don't know why you have to do it, but nobody else does. It's dumb. So but at least you have term determination. I don't know. You know what I'm saying? I do have to a lot of this also rules the teeth too. Saturn, the bones, and uh, Mercury does too. Mercury and Aries. Uh, are, they, sorry. are they bad or whatever? In the eleventh house, skin. Oh, well, that's just what it tortures you with because it's so much fun to have Saturn in your life, but it can be because it gives you this perfect health, but it gets. And it doesn't. And this is horrible. <laughs> Sorry. You know what I mean? Just, just whatever. And perfect day every day can give you a routine. Which who the hell wants that? It's chaotic and routine. How are you gonna find a routine in a chaotic world that we're we're put in? And plus this position too. These, that too. The Iceland and crab. Your third house is in Leo. So when you talk, people want to listen. Cause it's yeah. They want to also. And. And then, okay, your you, what you like, your North Lawn is in Gemini, and it's in the 12th house, Taurus. So you might have been at well, the 12th house is like 
world of Pisces and it's exotic and illusions and if you have Venus in there it kind of makes you a stripper for money because Taurus and stuff it might make you an exotic dancer it, if it's Libra or Taurus I yeah I, 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 um, what do you call it? I actually got a, a hired I couldn't do it. My uncle used I couldn't to, do it because I was a mother. I was like, oh, okay. I feel, I feel like mom. You know what I mean? Like, sure. I don't know. I'm a cool, you're a cool mom. <laughs> I guess it would have made me a cool mom. Yeah. And, but. and your, well, uh, your life purpose and what you lack is kind of, a, a ge it's Gemini, it, but you already learned everything about being Sagittarius, which means family with life happy go lucky and traveling bullshit I guess and higher learning stuff and preaching I don't fucking know you bring that and teach that to the world and now it's time to learn about Gemini shit like your hands your arms communicating and uh, your mind or, and multiple personalities bullshit I don't know and talking I don't know and, yeah. some, and your spiritual world the psychic ability and the oh fashion for other people I have yeah it'll be your purpose to do that and you do listen to me listen oh, you you, you have Jupiter and a Capricorn in the 8th house. 8th house ruled by Scorpio's occult knowledge, death, sex, and transformation. Your Jupiter, a planet of luck, and so is mine, is in the 8th house, which makes us both mediums. If you put effort into it, if you don't put effort into it, you're not going to fucking get what you can do, and, and, and everybody else is doing it. Yeah, I try to ignore That's so raven, and it's actually your name. <laughs> That's so raven. You really literally are. And it, that, so you, you have to do that. You have to aim at it, and it'll be lucky for you. It, 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 Jupiter rules expansion and higher learning, and it makes it open the target up. So if I try to, to ignore that part of my life, then you're just gonna be a loser because it's not spoon fed to nobody. You just have it, bitch. You have the senses. All you gotta do is pay attention to your mind and see things. And it's for your reputation, and you can probably make money off of it, which I do not do that. I do it all for free because the reward is to be psychic and fucking self. And it's hard enough to get somebody to just be like, listen. I'm on the phone with you. Are you wearing a hot pink shirt? Am I right? Who gives a shit? Bye. Uh, no, but what if you were? And I didn't know, right? That's how it works. That's how you just see things through other people too. Like you'll get flashes of bullshit that you don't even know. Be like, why am I seeing a giraffe? Because, I know. Right? And, and just try to say what you can and what you see. Just try to say what you can see because um, Lilith and Pisces also means you have to strive and rebel to try to get someone to know that you, your psychic abilities because it's not good because no one's gonna be like hey, i don't want to see that get out of my shit shit uh, they're not gonna be a mind reader but i'm afraid that i, I yeah yeah because they're idiots they're not the ones that have the sure that they have a gift i don't know it's it's, really a, it's a skill bitch anything they'll give oh, ain't nobody giving nothing ain't nobody spoon fed nothing you have an eyeball, you're opening them up, you're free fucking will, right? You listen with your own will. The spirits are not talking to nobody, only the people who are listening. That's why you'd be like, listen to that, can you hear that with your mind? You're listening, and then you can hear the spirits. Nobody else is gonna fucking sit down and pay, be patient and have to fucking listen to that bullshit. But that's... <laughs> but it gets annoying sometimes because, I don't know. Because no one will give you confirmation, no one will give you time to fucking day to finish the psychery. Like, you'll see a spirit on somebody, and they'll be like, oh! Baby, I gotta go. Like, fuck you. I'm just seeing something that you wish you saw the fucking rest of your goddamn life. You're waiting to die to see this bullshit. I, I have a sister. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I think she's so too. I think so too. I will have to record that that I picked up on your sister when the first time I met you. No. Yeah, I'm not lying. And you're just like her, right? And she has reddish brown hair? No, she, well, that's my 23 year old sister. Okay, is she my, alive? No, my other Well, don't tell me nothing. Don't tell me oh, nothing. Okay. Because that's cheating. Okay. You don't yeah, tell yeah, the psychic yeah. nothing. Okay. Well, okay. You're only supposed to say yes or no, and I'm only supposed to say yes or no, because the more detail we get, be like, I had a watch that was a zebra on it. Yeah. Uh, no, bitch, I'm supposed to say if I see that. Now you're, now you're fucking with my imagination. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So right. let me leave it alone. You know what I mean? It's but, supposed yeah. to be like a blind date, blind date psychic reading, blind okay. reading. That's, what, that's how you do it with everybody. That's why strangers are easier than people you already know. Strangers, yeah. Exactly, yeah. Because people that you know, you know, they're you already, yeah. Yeah. So it's easy for you to yeah and and, and it don't work out it don't yeah, work it don't work very well you think it, it's well, not maybe running. another lunch or something tomorrow right. so we can have another day yeah and also you can't postpone things like that my little is very means react now or never because it's not going to be there forever yours is uh but yours is in the public eye too uh lilith and pisces though which means your psychic ability is there and your compassion for people and your kindness which you lack and you're supposed to gain and it's your purpose to be this and you're gaining every time you show this bullshit spiritual bullshit really? for that and your whole life will be the uh, will be yeah. filled with little bits of bits of your own your own personal purpose doesn't mean 
God's like, this is your purpose, it's just your own personal purpose, is uh, your North Node. So, like, why are Fridays, like, my worst days ever? Like, for the worst days? I don't know, because I'm not a uh, God. I know, I know that. <laughs> but, but I, like, I, I don't know. Do you really have anything, like, to do, like, on, on your... On, on your people's, uh, I, I don't really know, really. I don't know about that. Okay. But days have something to do with stuff. I don't know. Probably. Okay. Um, okay. Your fifth house is in Libra, and you have Pluto in there. You have Pluto and Scorpio there, which is your relationship with children, and it's uh, uh, like you'll cuss in front of children, maybe, probably, <laughs> because it's like you're, they're just uh, just as much as we are, right? Yeah. So you'll just say the hidden secrets there about you know in front of kids because they're just like us to human. Yeah. And then it also means you have a beautiful heart because your fifth house is in Libra and you have a beautiful feet because your 12th house is in Taurus and a beautiful soul because your 12th house is in Taurus. And your purpose is to get in touch with your fucking soul and to be a messenger and communicator in the first place. But yeah, Jupiter in eighth house makes shit fucking medium and all astrologers say so and we both have that. But, I, but the only difference is that I have Jupiter in Aquarius so the eighth house Capricorn. But you have Jupiter in Capricorn and eighth house Capricorn. Also, this is your death house. Okay, this means you're gonna you're gonna live a long fucking life. Doesn't mean you're gonna be happy because it doesn't say that about me either. If you if you die at eighth house Taurus, you'll die happily old age. But no, not us. We have to have a hard life while we're living. Yeah, we'll just have to suffer through it while we fucking still live. You get to live old age, bitch, with me. I'll see you in the granny place. I'll see you in the granny panties, babe. <laughs> okay? That's right. What? We'll be there. <laughs> we'll be wearing an old thong. <laughs> yeah, right there. There we go. There we go. We'll be there. Okay, awesome. That'd be great. Awesome. You just made me. You just made me really happy. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So, M Michelle Pfeiffer, she also is Gemini Rising, and she's a Taurus, and she has 10th house Aquarius like you. Really? Yes, bitch. I'm so cool. But you got Moon and Pisces, and her Moon is in Virgo, and that's polarity of each other, and yeah, whatever, it's better. And Buffy, the first layer, has Moon and so Pisces. So can you, like, read some of this stuff out for me, too? Bam, bam. This is your birth chart. You're a Taurus, my favorite sign of all signs. Uh, and you're a Taurus in the, oh, ninth, ninth house of Aquarius. Um, mine is, too, so adventure, learning stuff is where you like to be. I don't know. Your moon is in Pisces, okay? That's your inner being, your mind emo and emotions. It's in your 10th house, of course. Okay. Your moon in Pisces means this is your mother. This is how she treated you. This means that she showed you unconditional love. You had to... And she might have either been overly spiritual and she probably, and you're probably schizophrenic. You might be if because of this. And if you're not, it's okay. And then, like, it also means you have to learn forgiveness through her. And plus, she probably showed you unconditional love, but she'd rather uh, do drugs and take responsibility for you or you could have been like in um foster care almost or something like that or been taken care of by other strangers or she watched you at her work maybe and she maybe was your friend in 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 the public's eye but at home your fourth house is in leo okay at home you're the bossy king bitch right at home is that why i fell in love with the leo i mean like oh first. I guess you, that's how you feel at home, because you want your house to be okay. like a Leo at home. And that's where all the drama is anyways. I don't know. Yeah, yeah it was the It's mostly at home. And then, um, uh, but like, when you go home, you act totally different from the public side. The public side, like out in the, how you want to be remembered, is like you are, you, uh, you are very, like this is my favorite placement for cameras because the fourth house in Leo means that your mom was a big fan of yours. She, she, she treated you like a celebrity sort of at home. And she wanted to put you in plays and bring you into the modeling. Uh, yeah, that's what it is. She's the same. She's not now. She's not. She don't even have nothing to do with me. Like she's like jealous of me. I don't know. Well, there is. There is a. There is a. A Lilith and Pisces. You also have. So you're 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 rebelling to try to be like your mom in the public side because she wanted you want to kind of be like her at work or something. Because uh, the tenth house is your work and your public uh, image, and you'll be remembered for that. Because you want to be this way, but people are not letting you be this way. Kind of being like your mom in a way, and then um, but yeah. So since she would want to put you in plays and stuff or patches, like you said, which is cool because you should be. Because this placement of tenth house Aquarius in the public's eye 
you are so cooperative and like people if you, uh, directors will not have no problem with you like if you were a cheerleader or at a play I wasn't cheerleading. this is it yeah and if somebody like broke their foot or was sick you could take their place and they would choose you and you'd be the freaking best at it because you know everybody else's lines you know everybody else's part and this is like the because your higher self is on stage you are this you know everything when you're out there and your fourth house was like that's your talent it's your um, expression but you need to put it out on the stage and people have to push you go be a cheater go be a yeah, cheater yeah, right. and you wouldn't do it and everybody would freaking miss out on your awesome fucking higher knit uh, higher being awareness because that's your higher self is the Aquarius part and astrology was that too so i'm just impressed by people who have this fucking placement because they are so cooperative and and um you have to push them into something that yeah. to, into the to light do it, but, to but do it yeah, but they do. Y'all do it perfectly. But the ten thousand scorpions, they need to be pushed into the thing. But they're so chaotic and hard to put in the uh, spotlight because they do it authentically. And if you didn't get the clip, then you're not gonna get it again. But with Aquarius, they can repeat it or do whatever, and they will. Um, they will play somebody else's part that's not showing up. Because I, I, I'm just like, that's an awesome. S S right, cool. You know what I'm saying? Wow. So okay. So I love that placement for you as well. And then you have. Uh, Venus and yeah, Mercury and Aries, so you can, and it's in the um, 11th house in social media. So you'll talk like a friend, you'll tell people things that you know aggressively and stuff, and like say things while thinking in a way. I don't know. Um, okay, say that again. Like, I'll, I'll say things and I don't mean to be aggressive. Yeah. Aggressive. Yeah. Time. It's just you're trying to get to a harder matter and get to the point is talking. So, how do I like change my. It, you can't. But you're doing it in a friendly way, and plus, it's also testing people's waters. Like, you'll say something just to see if they're on your plate, like if they're on your side. You're like, oh, so that's how it really is. Because you want to be friendly, because uh, you're more, oh my god, well, there's an evil place in this book. It's hard. so evil. It's polarity of your sun sign. Because your ego is not when you get mad. Your ego is different from when you get mad in your sex life. Okay, this is the horrible place that anybody can ever have sometimes. Uh, okay, this is, um... Uh, Mar your Mars is in Scorpio, okay, and it's in the sixth house of every day. So you put your willpower in it every day. You you're in despair every day. But um, I'll I'll tell you in a minute. Bam, bam. Okay, what I saw first was you can go wherever you want. <laughs> right. Okay. Okay. I don't need a whole lot of chips. Let me see your glitter, you think? Pretty. Pretty glitter. <laughs> On the spot. No pressure. It doesn't matter if you're wrong or right. I'm trying to pick up all my stuff, whether I'm readable or not. Or I'll film too. Just do whatever you want to. Oh my god, you can't even spot that one. I have to. Guess it's like a guessing game, and it's like charades. Just say what you see. I'll promise. And that's all it is. And if you're wrong, it doesn't matter. I was just your imagination in the way. It doesn't matter. You're not from here, are you? I am, but everyone thinks I'm not. <laughs> wow, really? You're yeah. From here? Yeah, I am from here, though. Wow. Yeah. Um, I don't know. You have, you're, you're the only child. No. Are you? No, no, no. You're no, not the only child? No. You might be. It feels like now, because whatever. Oh, okay, maybe now. Yeah, but not really. Is that why? You're not yet, no? Oh, it's hard. It's hard. It's hard because you know what? I never. I you can. So. Much time now. Okay. Let's, uh, let's you know see, what I mean? see if you can pick up on anybody who's dead. Just for the hell of it. Guess who that you think might be dead and might be around you? Around you? Okay. Um, let's get away from it. Yeah. Uh, and I need to, like, oh, get away from it? Okay. Yeah, let's get away from it. You're like, I need to get away from it. I do need to get away from it. You will I'm trying to quit. Calm, please. Just get away from it. Calm, please. Yeah. Um, Maybe, maybe a, a red. I have a stab at it. Mm -hmm. Maybe it passed away. Maybe. Mm -mm. That's okay. Keep on going. I'm, I'm trying. I'm trying. It's really hard for me to. Uh, Sometimes with people, it might not even. It might be. A lot of mine on somebody else. A lot of mine, yeah. Because the more, mine. more, the more people have, the more the problems, the more easier to pick up on, and the more. I think it's a lot mine, more vision too when I when I sleep and yeah. I 
Say the simple. Say what? Show us the visions we shall see. Show us the visions we shall see. What? As we will the moon. Show us, I mean, really though, I have to Show us the visions we shall see. Say it again. Show us the visions we shall see. As we will, so moan it be. Ta-da! Okay. That's funny. But no, it's like I have, it's like premonitions, more or less. Yeah. Like, I have them, like, okay, before my grandma died, the night before. Oh, that testimony. The night before she died, I went to sleep, and... At about 10.30 at night, I woke up screaming and crying, you know, oh. and I yelled at my aunt, and she came in there, and she was like, what's wrong? I was like, I just was just standing over your, over my over her grandma's car. Mm -hmm. She's like, your grandma's fine, your grandma's fine. Right. So then the next day, I come home from school, everything's cool. She said, I called your grandma and checked on her, and she's doing, she's doing better. She was sick, I guess, from the flu, but she was getting better. She was going to take a nap. So that later that night, uh, I went to bed, and then at 10.30 at night, that night, mm. I hear my aunt screaming, and I come in there, and I'm like, what's going on? And no, oh. I didn't even have to say what's going on. I looked yeah. at her, and she said, how did you know? Right. Mm -hmm. And I was like, I was 13. I don't, I don't know how I knew. I don't know. Um, and then I've had a couple more, and I tried not, some of them aren't so, I mean, nobody wants those kind of visions and then they happen you know what i mean well, yeah no one wants that to happen but they want the visions but Whether yeah it's gonna but, but mine has always been negative yeah so i don't know how to reach into more yeah positive so you can, things instead yeah. of trying to see i don't you think i'll ever be <laughs> i don't know i see positive things i don't know a lot of it, a lot of mine are 